If It Takes a Lifetime by Jason Isbell is going to be played in drop D tuning and then capoed on the seventh fret of the guitar. This is how it's getting played on the album version. Uh, there could be live versions where Jason Isbell is capoed somewhere other than the seventh fret, but to play along with the recorded version uh, from the album Something More Than Free, you need to go to drop D tuning and then capo on the seventh fret. From there, the intro, the way that Jason Isbell, it sounds like he's playing it on the recorded version, on the album version, he is going to be doing a hybrid picking style where he uses a pick to keep two notes running, the six string and the four string, in constant um, succession with one another. But inside of that, there are there's a D chord and a G chord that ends up being played with a riff inside of it. So for the first chord, the D chord, you need to have your first finger on the uh, three string two fret, your ring finger on the two string three fret, and you will be pinching the first set of notes, which will be plucking down with your pick on the six string and pinching up with your second finger on the open one string. After that pinch, you need to immediately hammer down with your second finger to the one string two fret. And then your pick will go to the four string, like this is going to be happening the whole time. And then your after your pick hits the four string, your second finger will hit the two string where your ring finger is. Then your pick goes back to the six string, your second finger will then hit the three string where your first finger is. And then your pick hits the open four string. So that you get a picking pattern very, very slowly like this. And that's the D chord. To just stop and practice that D chord because the next chord, the G chord, will be um, similar to that but uh, how the riff in this D chord is descending basically you're going with your second finger and the G chord it ascends and you go uh, three, two, one strings as opposed to one, two, three strings. So whenever you get ready for the G chord, you're going to move with your ring finger to the 6th string. It's going to be the relative 12 fret, and I'm speaking of all these frets relative to the capo, I'm sorry, the relative 5 fret, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is the real 12th fret. Um, so ring finger on the 6th string, 5 fret. Your second finger will go down on the 3 string, 4 fret, and your first finger will go down on the 2 string, 3 fret. So second finger on the three string four fret, first finger down on the two string three fret, ring finger all the way down here on the bass, the six string five fret. And your picking pattern here will be first start with your pick on the six string, and then your second finger will immediately hit the four string where your second finger on your left hand is. And then your pick will hit the open four string, your second finger hits the second string, your pick hits the sixth string, and then your second finger hits the open one string, and then your pick hits the open four string, and you get this pattern. Um, and then it just repeats. It's really hard for me to get this picking pattern clean. Whenever Jason Isbell plays this live, he tends to just strum this by going. So like strum across the big D chord with your hammer on on the second on the one string two fret with your second finger. And then pick the two string and the three string. And then go to the G chord 
and just pick six string, three, uh, six string, three string, two string, one string. I think that's probably what he's doing live. Which that's a lot easier, but I will say I like the challenge, and I, again, I can't play it clean most of the time. But I like the challenge of that album way and that finger style. So, once you get that riff down, getting to the chords of the verse and the chorus, it's pretty simple. Uh, the verse is going to begin with... is just a D chord. Um, in that D chord, you can hear Jason Isbell lift up his first finger from off of the third string two fret, pluck the open three string, and then put his first finger back down on the three string two fret. Uh, the strumming pattern throughout most of this will be like a down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 down up, up, down. Yeah, down, 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 up, up, down. Down, 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 up, up, down, down. Down, 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 up, up, down, down. So that feel. Um, after the D chord, it goes to an A7 chord. That would be an open five string. Uh, Jason puts his second finger on the four string two fret, open three string, and ring finger on the two string two fret with an open one string. Then it comes back to the D chord and walks up to a G chord by out of the D chord going with your pinky finger to the six string four fret and then raising into a G chord with your ring finger on the six string five fret. Your six, uh, your ring finger will be blocking out the five string. You'll have an open four, open three, first finger on the two string three fret. A lot of times in these chords you can hear an open one string ringing out. So, so far of the verse we've got D to the A7 to the D chord to the walk chord to the G chord back to the D chord to the A chord and comes down to the G chord. And right here you can hear kind of the mimic of the original riff happen where in the G chord, so we've got our ring finger on the six string five fret and our first finger on the two string three fret. It sounds like what Jason Isbell does here is goes with his ring finger and you have to kind of contort your fingers a little bit but with your uh, with your second finger, I'm sorry not ring finger, but with your second finger grab the three string three fret and slide it up one fret to the three string four fret and then you can play the two string three fret where your first finger is already and then the open one string and then you come back to the uh, the D chord. I should back way up. I forgot that at the end of the intro the end of the intro is the D chord to the A7 chord to the D chord which is what gets mimicked right there at the end of this course. Um, I say at the end of the course, that was at the end of the verse. So then we go to the chorus, which is a G chord to the D chord. Repeat the D chord, and then it goes to an A chord. Come back down to the D chord, walk to that F sharp, note or our relative F sharp, the 6th string 4th fret, and come up to the G chord, and then to the D chord, and then D chord, to the A chord, to the G chord, to the D chord. Whenever we come to the, and then you've got the riff that happens again. Uh, after the second chorus, we've got a bridge, like an instrumental break, that is going to be an E minor to a B minor to an E minor, to a G, to an A7. The way that you're going to play this E minor is second finger on the 6th string, 6th uh, string 2 fret, ring finger on the 5th string 2 fret, everything else open. So there's your E minor, then it goes to a B minor, 
that will be first finger on the five string two fret, ring finger on the four string four fret, pinky finger on the three string four fret, second finger on the two string three fret. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Then it goes back to the E minor and then walks to the G by out of the E minor, go with your ring finger to the six string four fret and then six string five fret putting your first finger down on the two string three fret to flush out that G chord. And then your A7 chord from earlier. That A7 kind of dies and then we've got another beginning of a soft uh, chorus, the D chord to the A7 chord and then it comes back to the D chord and kind of hits that big and then walks up to a G chord by going first finger to the 6th string 2 fret which is like our E minor uh, then I use my pinky finger to the 6th string 4 fret and then the G chord the ring finger to the 6th string 5 fret or G chord from earlier with first finger pulled back to the 2 string 3 fret and then back to the D chord to the A chord to the G chord I think it does that riff again. Uh, so the chords I feel like are simple. The hard part of this song is that opening riff, which I really need to practice more, but I was able to get it clean enough to understand what's being played there. So hopefully, um, hopefully that little breakdown of the intro gives you something to work with if you're looking to learn how to play it like it's played on the album version. So those are the chords and the movements to If It Takes a Lifetime by Jason Isbell. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to approach the song.